What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Thank you for joining me for some more Star Trek, the original series, season three. Today, we're watching an episode called Is There No Truth in Beauty? We are being posed a question. Sounds like a rather deep question. Will this episode get deep philosophically? I certainly hope so. Let's find out. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the comments. We have been assigned to convey the Medusans' ambassador to the Federation back to their home planet. While the thoughts of the Medusans are the most sublime in the galaxy, so utterly hideous that the sight of a Medusan brings total madness to any human who sees one. Oh my. Skirt, Captain. Captain, what are you doing here? You'll have to leave before the Medusan ambassador. Are we going to get to see them? Mr. Spock, do you have the visor? You must be sure to wear it. I shall be wearing the visor. We mustn't keep the ambassador waiting if you'll go with Mr. Scott. It's a rare privilege meeting one of the designers of the Enterprise. One of the designers? Oh, Scotty's excited. Are you sure this visor will work? It has proved effective for Vulcans. It's your human half I'm worried about. Interesting. Very interesting premise. She looks quite lovely. She must be a... Is she a Vulcan, too? I'm Dr. Jones. Wait. I know her. The ambassador is most honored to meet you, Mr. Spock. No, she's not a Vulcan. But she is from Tomorrow is Yesterday. Okay, so he took his... They took their visors off. I'm guessing it's inside that container. I have, I have a good feeling about this episode. I have a good feeling. This is Captain Kirk to all ship's personnel. Clear passageways immediately. Yeah, I congratulate you on your assignment with Ambassador Kolos. Thank you. It will depend upon my ability to achieve a true mind link with the Ambassador. I've heard, Mr. Spock, that you turned down the assignment with the Ambassador. I was unable to accept. My life is here. So I thought only Vulcans could like wear the visors and be safe, but she doesn't look like a Vulcan, but... Spock to bridge, we have arrived at the ambassador's quarters. Can you imagine? Your physical form is so grotesque that people go, go crazy if they see you? I hope I it's a baby horde. An opportunity to exchange greetings with the ambassador. I'm sure the ambassador would be charmed. They're not going to show us, huh? Are they? Oh my! Well, I wouldn't really consider it ugly or grotesque. I almost envy you your assignment. I see in your mind that you are tempted to take my place. Not correct, Doctor. Were you born a telepath? Yes. That is why I had to study on Vulcan. Oh. She's a human telepath. Ambassador Carlos often finds the process of transport somewhat unsettling. Our ship surgeon often makes the same complaint. <laughs> Leave Bones alone! <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm just now noticing her dress and her. What is it he sees when he looks at you? I must know. Oh, you took your visors off. Tell me, Dr. Jones, why isn't it dangerous for you to be with Carlos? As I understand it, no human can look at Carlos, even with a visor, without going mad. How do you manage? I spent four years on Vulcan studying their mental discipline. You poor girl. Ah. <laughs> Makes sense. On Vulcan, I learned to do things impossible to learn anywhere else. To read minds? How not to read them, Captain? I don't understand. Dr. Jones was born a telepath, Captain. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what most humans generally find impossible to understand is the need to shut out the bedlam of other people's thoughts and emotions. You know, I was just noticing your Vulcan edict, Mr. Spock. As a matter of fact, 
I wear it this evening to honor you, Doctor. It's very interesting. I might even say fascinating. But back to your mission. It would certainly solve many of our navigational problems. Well, the key is the mind link that I learned on Vulcan. I don't care how benevolent the Medusans are supposed to be. Isn't it suicidal to deal with something ugly enough to drive man mad? <laughs> I wouldn't consider them ugly. Yes, I think most of us are, are attracted by beauty and repelled by ugliness. At the risk of sounding prejudiced, gentlemen, here's to beauty. I am interested to where this is going. Also, she did look at that thing without the visors, but she seems fine. How can one so beautiful condemn herself to look upon ugliness the rest of her life? As you, doctor, condemn yourself to look upon disease and suffering for the rest of your life. Touché. I love Scotty's kilt. What is it? There's somebody nearby thinking of murder. Oh. Who is it? Can you tell? It isn't there anymore. Captain, would you mind if I said goodnight? Of course. Are you sure you're well enough to find your way along? Of course, Dr. McCoy. Please, don't worry about it. They like her. Look at Kirk. Mm. <laughs> she is something special. Very special. Yes, quite beautiful. I've known Dr. Jones long enough to be aware of her remarkable gifts. Were you the one thinking about murder? Well, what's troubling you with the girl? I don't know what it is exactly. She seems very vulnerable. But there's something so very disturbing about her. That's a weird thing to say. She seems very vulnerable, and I'm disturbed. What? Hmm. Where is this going? Who is it? Larry. Mm. I've got to talk to you. Don't trust him. Please, Miranda, don't go with Carlos. Now, we've been over this time and time again. But you're a woman, and that I'm a man, one of your own kind. And that Carlos will never be able to give you anything like this. She does not seem to be into that. I simply cannot love you the way you want me to. And I'm going away with Carlos. That's final. So it's you. He wants to kill the... I didn't know that it was you before. Who is it you want to kill, Larry? Is it me? No, I think it's the... Medusin. I want to help you. So now you want to help me. Now I know what a mere human male has to do to get a reaction out of you. Why don't you try being a woman for a change? Why don't you try just taking your rejection gracefully? She's not into you. How do you kill something that's like formless though? This is like a spooky episode. I'm digging it. <laughs> it's like a horror horror episode. She must be really like she's trained well. She seems unaffected by this thing. Even without the visors. What? Her mental fortitude is really strong, but Bones said she seemed vulnerable, which is interesting because she seems like the least vulnerable person here in that regard. No harm has come to the ambassador, Captain. Who could have done such a thing? Larry Marvick. Why? He jelly. Do you know whether he saw the Medusa? Yes, he did. Then insanity will surely be the result, Captain. Oh dear. Captain Kirk to all ship personnel, red alert. An attempt was made to murder Ambassador Collis. He is Lawrence Marvick. Be on the watch for him. <laughs> you say what? Oh. Oh. I'm loving the camera work on this. Oh. Oh my 
goodness. I don't believe this myself, Captain, but we're traveling warp factor 8.5. 8.5? And accelerating. Warp factor nine. And accelerating. Is he trying to go somewhere specific? We'll be safe on the boundaries of the universe. We'll be safe. Oh my goodness! Are we leaving the galaxy? Scotty, where are we? Beyond the boundaries of the galaxy. We made it. We're safe. From what? No, they come in your dreams. That's the worst. They suffocate in your dreams. No. We'll take you to a place to hide. A better no. place. Come no. on. Yeah, you can hide in the brig. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, my beautiful love. I thought I lost you. He was crazy before. You brought it with you. It's here. It's here. You brought it with you. Liar! Liar! Oh. Don't love her. She'll kill you if you love her. This episode is very hectic. I love you, Miranda. <sighs> He's dead, Jim. Drove so insane that he died? Oh, Scotty was so excited to talk to him. We have no way to determine our position in relation to the galaxy. We are in a completely unknown void. Oh, wow. They don't know how to get back. When we exceeded warp speed factor 9.5, we apparently entered a space-time continuum. Oh, boy. A medman got us into this, and it's beginning to look as if only a medman can get us out. Maybe. The Medusans have developed interstellar navigation to a fine art. Could call us function. Perhaps for the purpose of this emergency, I might become Colos, a mind link to create a double entity. Hazards? There will be a tendency to lose separate identity. Mm -hmm. Unnecessary risk. I don't think she'll want anyone to intrude in the kind of rapport she has with Collis. In some ways, she is still most human, Captain. Particularly in the depth of her jealousy. I could confine her to quarters. Not sufficient. Her mind must be so engaged that no thought of what I am doing shall intrude. Is he going to use his moxie? Is that the right term? His mojo? Manly appeal? They have no scent. Try these. What a beautiful little greenhouse they have here. It's just a thorn. I was hoping to make you forget about this today. It doesn't hurt anymore. You mustn't blame yourself because Marvin loved you. I didn't want his love. Someday, you'll want human love. Shall I tell you what human companionship means to me? A struggle, a defense against the emotions of others. Pity is the worst of all. What about love, Miranda? You're young. I don't see why is any... I mean, I know he's trying to just distract her, but... You're going to yearn for someone who looks like yourself, someone who isn't ugly. Who is to say whether Carlos is too ugly to bear? Yeah. I meant no insult. Well, it was pretty insulting. <laughs> she seems to have maybe not a love, maybe a love, but a deep admiration for the Carlos. And everybody's just calling him ugly. Carlos, no, Miranda. you mustn't let him do it. Miranda, don't. Let me go. Miranda. I had a feeling this wasn't going to work. We must stop him. Let me go. Should have just hypoed her. Put her to sleep. The Enterprise is at stake. It is not possible for you to be involved. I've already committed myself to Mind Link when Carlos and I reach the Medusan vessel. The object is to pilot this ship. That mm -hmm. is something you cannot do. Then teach me to operate the ship. I realize that you can do almost anything a sighted person can do. You can't pilot a starship. Oh. You are blind, and there are some things you simply cannot do. Oh, she can't see him. No wonder. Evidently a highly sophisticated sensor web. You can't see. And Collins can't hurt you. An elegant solution. But I fail to understand why you apparently try to conceal your blindness. I think I understand. 
is the worst of all. Mm. Pity? Which I hate. Mr. Spark will make the mind link. No other decision is possible. I won't let you. Please. If we can't persuade you, you'll have to take this up with Commerce. So she... She has no concept of, like... I, assuming she was born blind and she's never been sighted. She doesn't know beautiful, ugly, the same way that everyone else sees it. Oh, that didn't sound good. Seems I have no choice but to obey you. Oh, was she just upset? Carlos has been brought to the bridge and placed behind a protective shield. I love how very, like, sci-fi this is. It's pretty neat. So it's both of them in there? This is delightful. I know you. James Kirk. Captain and friend for many years. And Uhura. She walks in beauty like the night. That's not Spock. Are you surprised <laughs> to find that I've read Byron, Doctor? That's Spock. <laughs> I'm a brave new world that has such creatures in it. It is new to thee. And now, to the business at hand. Yes, Mr. Sullivan, release the helm to Mr. Spock. I see. Coordination is completed. Warp one in six seconds. So how fast do they need to go to get out? I know it can't be sublight speed, but is that just like warp one is fast enough? Oh, we're going back through. Position report, please, Mr. Chekhov. Our position is so close to the point where we entered the void. The difference isn't worth mentioning. <laughs> Exactly. Bullseye, Mr. Spock. <laughs> Bullseye. Maneuver completed, Captain. Take over, Mr. Sulu. How compact your bodies are. And what a variety of senses you have. But most of all, the aloneness. You live out your lives in this shell of flesh. Well, it's not that bad. How lonely you are. You must dissolve the link. So soon. There must be no delay. You're wise, Captain. Give us our Spock back. I guess since they're like such a telepathic species, they, they're always in each other's minds and they're just that kind of deal. Shouldn't he be wearing his visors? Captain! Spock! Cover your eyes! Ooh. Don't move. Jim. Nobody can go in there to help him. They'll go insane too. Spock, are you alright? <sighs> what a face. Spock, it's alright. There's that camera again. This is so neat. Oh, man. Help me get him to sick bay. It's up to Miranda. She's gonna have to do something. Unless Miranda can look down into his mind and turn it outward to us, we will lose Spock. But does she want to? Why wouldn't she? She tried to help Marvik. Marvik is dead. That's different. And Spock is a rival. Even Spock felt the violence of her jealousy. Whatever happens, Bones, don't interfere. <laughs> Listen to Bones. Who's there? Oh, she is completely blind without her garb. No change. Only that his life processes are heavy. What are you doing about it? No doubt you think I can wake him with a kiss. Well, he's not a machine. But he is a Vulcan. Only a half. The other half is human. Far more human than you, apparently. If you don't reach him soon, he'll die. That's what you want, isn't it? Lie! Oh, yes, it is. You want him to die. I'll make you hear such ugliness. 
as Spock saw when he looked at Carlos with his naked eyes. The ugliness is within you. It's a lie! Oh, jeez. The stench of jealousy permeates you. Why don't you strangle him while he lies there? Don't say any more, Carlos please. knows what's in your heart. Please, go away. Is this helping? I don't... He's just insulting her. Well, hopefully she got the message. What'd you say to her? Maybe too much. <laughs> I told her she was an ugly bitch. <laughs> How do I know that I didn't kill him? How do I know that she can stand to hear the truth? No, Spock. It's to the death or to life for both of us. Okay. Just putting her life on the line. This music is... Very intense. Spock. Look like you paid a visit to the devil himself, Miranda. Well, they're both okay. I am one with Carlos. Well, I'm truly sorry that you're leaving. We've come to the end of an eventful trip, Captain. I didn't think you'd even talk to me. Yeah. Your words enabled me to see. I have something for you. Oh. I suppose it has thorns. I never met a rose that didn't. <laughs> so that's why she was like, oh, it doesn't smell like anything, because she couldn't see it. So the only way she could appreciate the flower was to smell it. I understand, Mr. Spock. The glory of creation is in its infinite diversity. And the ways our differences combine to create meaning and beauty. Peace and long life, Spock. Live long and prosper, Miranda. Well, what an episode. This episode was, there was a lot going on and I feel like I got to watch it again one or two times more to really fully understand it because I was, I was trying to like keep up with everything that was going on, but I didn't have a lot of time to stop and really think about maybe it's something that somebody said or a question or a thought before like I had to you know keep watching and then now the episode's over and it's like ah I don't even remember half the things that I was trying to contemplate first of all I loved the camera work and the music and just how especially at the beginning it felt like it was really leaning into the horror aspect which was really cool I really enjoyed that one of the things I latched onto early was when Bones was saying that she she seems very vulnerable and I was trying to keep that in mind because I had a feeling it was going to come up later like it would make sense why he would say that and it could be because she's blind maybe he I don't know when he realized it but maybe that's what he was referring to or maybe he was just referring to like even though she has this emotional like strength and well we perceived that she had like this really strong emotional uh, my, uh, control of her own mind and things like that because she could look directly at the medusin the name medusin is pretty cool too because like medusa you look at her she turned you turn to stone I thought, wow, she's super strong. Her mind is is really well trained, but maybe not. Maybe it was just kind of trick us because I got tricked. I thought she had a really strong mind, but the reason that she was able to look directly at the Medusa is because she wasn't seeing it at all. So maybe it was that a bit more than her training that allowed her to have this position to where she would be communicating with Kalos and uh, linking with him. And so her weakness became her strength. So when Spot came in and could potentially be the one to link with Kalos when she hadn't even done it yet, I think. I think she they were planning on doing it when they reached the planet or something. But she definitely felt threatened by him. 
she wanted so badly to be the one to like have that connection and then he was there just probably being able to do that just just as easily or maybe more easily than she could kind of skimming through um i see that she left the rose behind at the dinner table and kirk kind of picked it up and looked at it maybe she didn't know it was there maybe that was like a clue that she couldn't quite see even though that kind of like um lacy net thing that she wore was giving her sight i guess she could probably see it because you know or perceive it so maybe she left the rose behind because she didn't feel any sort of reason to she didn't feel any attachment to it it had no meaning to her and then when kirk said he never met a rose that didn't have its thorns was obviously talking about her like she is beautiful inside and out but also has you know her imperfections as we all do and then she did take the rose with her after that, you know, something that's that's like her. And let's see. So at the end, she was able to link with Kalos and she thanked Kirk for that, um, for letting her see the truth about herself and I guess making some realizations about her feelings and maybe some things that were holding her back. And while I'm not sure I really have an answer to exactly what it means, I did love how beautiful and poetic the final words spoken between Miranda and Spock were creation and its infinite diversity and the way those differences create meaning and beauty. So those infinite differences, they create conflict and strife and misunderstandings between each other. But maybe it's a little bit easier to appreciate the beauty of our differences because of that. And then to go back to the title, now that I'm looking at it again, it's actually called Is There In Truth No Beauty? Which I read it wrong the first time. So I guess that circles back to our differences are what make us beautiful to each other. And hopefully that outward appearances, outward beauty or ugliness are not really the main thing that's important. And that the true beauty lies within. Sounds kind of cheesy, but I like it. I don't know. I'm dying to watch this one again. I feel like definitely like knowing where the episode is going and knowing that she's blind and things like that and watching it again and really being able to focus on the points and all the themes and the messages and symbolism and philosophy and all that good stuff. I think I'll be able to appreciate it more on a second viewing and I'm really excited to kind of revisit it and I would love to hear your guys's insight on all the things that maybe I missed anything that leaves me thinking and questioning I really enjoy that so I'm gonna say that I really liked this episode and even though I might have been a little bit confused at the end on everything that transpired what happened and what the meaning of it all is it had a really nice ending like it just it was just a nice feeling ending, if that makes sense. They've seen maybe each other's ugly sides a little bit, seen a little bit of the ugliness in themselves. I mean, maybe for Miranda specifically, but I feel like she she had a great character development in this. She really uh, was able to kind of blossom at the end here. So I thought it was really cool. What did you guys think? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'll see you guys in the comments. Can't wait to hear from you. And please get into the nitty gritty about all the like philosophical things because that's uh, what I enjoyed the most about this episode as, as well as the camera work and like the horror stuff. I don't know anything about the technical like side of that to be able to explain. But yeah, we had like the camera that was like kind of like the first person view of the characters like when they're fighting and stuff. Or like the one that zoomed in on her face and like warped it. Things like that. Okay, I need to shut up. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta let you guys go. Gotta let you guys go to the comments. I keep hitting the mic. Okay, thank you guys. Goodbye.